Hi guys, this is Sid Kulu, a bad English and the worst video quality on YouTube ever. Always providing my small audience with some fresh Nintendo Switch indie honest reviews. And today I'm here to show you Dulac and Faye Dance of Death. Dulac and Faye Dance of Death is a game originally developed by Salix Games and T Creeper Games in 2019, and now I'm gonna show you the console edition which Hidden Trap, in partnership with Dolores Entertainment, will release on 27th of January. Can you play arms without any arms? That's not possible, but I'm your feet. Yes! Please stop! Save! Stop, stop, stop! Help me! It's been a while since my last honest review. So I'm gonna try my best and surpass the 10 minutes mark for this video. Considering I don't have much to say about the game, I'll steal part of the text I found in the press kit. The game starts controlling Morgana Le Fay, the powerful sorceress, now transformed into a hound, along with the hero of the past, Sir Lancelot du Lac, who travels around the world searching for a cure for their curse. I do no such thing. I write with the tale still fresh in my mind. As Furthermore, well. the press kit also claims that the game takes place in real locations, based on real situations. The murders done by the Ripper and their locations are historically accurate. Which kind of clash with the sorceress turned into a dog and the demons you fight five minutes into the game? Dulac is the kind of guy that I'd never look for even as a friend, while Faye is a witch, turned into a dog by a spell, and thus she's now just a dog. While Dulac can talk with people, which are 90% of the NPCs, Faye can talk to animals, which are the leftovers of the game, and just occasionally will lead you to a useful talk. Many dialogues have in game cast scenes and voice actors. The cast is something they really spent money into, with the performances by leading actors, such as Perdita Weeks, Kira from Ready Player One, Gareth David Lloyd, Salas from Dragon Age, and Alexandra Roach, Carrie from Black Mirror. There are a lot of dialogue in the game, as you can expect from a narrative title, and they all are written in a good English. Sadly, there's no translation from what I can tell, so either you have a good English or you might not enjoy much of the story of Dula can fade and of that. The cutscenes also have a weird frame rate, loading times are some seconds longer than you might expect, so I'm not glad of the quality of the porting. But I haven't played the original version, so I can say for sure it's a matter of this version or if it was already an issue back then. They also spent money on the story, it's written by Philip Huxley, Batman, Arkham Knight in Battlefield, and BAFTA Breakthrough Brit winner Jessica Saunders. They spent so much money on this and that that developers went out of funds before the initial release, and the game had a major bug involving save states. From what I can tell, this console edition is save safe. Auto savings work for good and that's surely a plus to the console edition over the PC one. The audio is fine, well, to be honest I played it on mute for the whole time, because I was listening to some Japanese IDM track, specifically Surf, give it a look. But according to Wikipedia, the game won the award for Best Audio Design at the Independent Game Developers Association Awards, whereas its other nomination was for the Heritage Award that it was also nominated for Best Dialogue for an Indie Game at the 18th Annual GNG Awards. I was right after the prologue, 
which is completely linear and serves as a tutorial, that I lost track of the story and I didn't know where to head. I swear, I do have much more control over my path while running GoldenEye streets with the look down strategy. The objective I got stuck with told me to look for a place where to sleep, and after moving my characters for a while I fell asleep in real life. Sadly, that didn't count as a progress in the game. While this game was a point and click on Steam, it's now a walk and click on consoles. Walking is a bad choice to me, pointing with your mouse on PC is surely much better than moving around a character with your stick. <clears throat> also, movements are pretty bad, and a pain that can totally disrupt your time spent on Dulac and Fay. Characters are slow, and if you try to move them over 90 degrees, they'll do a turn around. They take so much time for a turn around that it looks like they have tank controls. Here where I am, they ask 100 euros to really control a tank for one hour. So it's all about your taste and pocket, I'd say, 10 controls for 16 bucks or controlling a tank for 100 euros. Pick your deal. Did I pass already the 10 minute mark or do I have to slow down the video? Damn, there's so much time missing. I guess I'll have to talk about my dog. I named her Zelda Ocarina of Time. Ocarina of Time is glued together and it's her surname. She feeds mainly on slippers. It doesn't matter what kind of food I cook or buy, she will still prefer my slippers. Before I met her, everybody I knew told me to never get a Shiba. Still, I did get one, and now I'm the one telling everybody never get a Shiba. They look adorable, anybody would pet them, but that's just the spider web. Once you get charmed by them, they start dominating you. Zelda loves me, and I love her, but we never have a caress, unless she's in deep sleep or coma. Otherwise, she'll bite my hand. She loves me, and that's why she bites me even more than she bites sleepers. So far, she never ate me, but I guess it's just a matter of time. She's the most adorable piranha I ever seen, and she acts like a cobra every time. Mm -hmm. <laughs>